What's going on guys? Hit pause here with a quick tip and tutorial on something very interesting on how to control something like a slider and get some precision out of it. Uh, sliders are actually 0 to 1 so what can end up happening is they can be a little unwieldy when you're using them on certain things where 0 to 1 is actually a dramatic effect. And one of those things happens to be UV coordinates. If you take UV coordinates close to 0, they start getting extremely jittery in terms of how very little value makes a huge impact in terms of, of how they have, uh, work. So I'm going to show something here real quick. So I'm just going to keep it in the small window. Um, one of the things that I have here is the um, pattern scale on this uh, customization screen here. And I can actually let you go down very small on the scale. However, down here, I actually still have a little bit of control. Like if I take the hardness all the way up, you can see that even a little bit, I actually can control it fairly finely. And normally, you can't do that. If I were to move this barely one pixel here, it would probably shoot all the way to somewhere here in reality. It would just be really, really hard to control. So what I've done is I've given myself precision on the low end of the curve. The way I did that, it's very simple actually. Let me find the scale. It's on here somewhere. Here we go. Here it is here. So what we do to get the precision, first, what I'm feeding from my UI is a slider value, which is just 0 to 1. All the way to the left is 0, all the way to the right is 1. You don't really have, it's a percent, OK? So, and it's not 1%, it's it's 100%, but it's from 0 to 1. What ends up happening is, like I said, and you, when we're dealing with UVs, this is a color pattern scale, which just happens to be a multiplier on my UVs. Um, when it gets down to zero, it goes spaztastic. The UVs just break; they don't work at zero. Um, so I not only control, remember zero to one. So I'm getting, you know, I need to determine what zero to one means. What's the minimum? What's the maximum? So in my case, the minimum isn't zero; it's 0.1. The maximum isn't one; it's eight. So we're looping back and forth between that. However, down in the 0 0.1, 0 0.11, 0 0.12 range, uh, I'm really, really having a dramatic effect on what's happening on the actual surface. So what I need to do is I need to pull some of that out, and we do that by using the data curve here. As you can see, this is a curve that is 0 to 1 in both axes. It's 0 to 1 in value and in time. That way, what I can do is, based on the value that I receive, I can merely tell the playhead to go to this value, which should return to me, say it's at 0.4 right now on the, on the little slider. At 0.4, I'm going to be about right here or so, and it's going to be a value of 0.24. Normally, if this was not here, 0.4 would just be 0.4. So in this range, as you can see, I have this very, 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 very low end curve here. Not a lot of change in the values. Okay, It's very light. So essentially what I'm doing is I'm creating a precision end of the curve. Okay, Now you have to keep in mind that whatever you take, you have to give, or whatever you give, you have to take. Uh, in this case here, we have a little bit of volume left over from the straight line here, which has to be made up for here. So what we end up with here is this is no longer one for one. This is actually steeper to make up for the fact that it had to delay. So keep, if you can draw a line in your head, you can see how much steeper we are here. We're just a couple of degrees, but it is a, it is a factor. However, in this case, because UVs are getting closer to 1, which is actually getting closer to them just being normalized, uh, their behavior just becomes more stable naturally as you get higher up. It isn't until the curve is on the low end and the UVs are very, very low, which causes an insanely large texture to appear, um, that we need to control this. And I do it in a few places on a few different curves. For instance, the first stiffness. 
I eased it in and I eased it out. In the mid-range, it was just perfectly fine. Everything felt normal. But when I got to the end, it started seeming weird. And when I got to the bottom, it started seeming weird. Okay? So, like, I, I just didn't have the control. So whatever end of the curve you don't have control over, you can use these timelines to, like I said, just give yourself precision or control the data just one level deeper and you can bring your sliders totally under control. So hopefully this has helped you guys. So this is Hippon signing off and I'll see you guys in the next one.